Let's continue to discuss factors that lead to pro-social helping behaviors. But instead of focusing on who helps, let's explore who's more likely to receive our help. While discussing research on pro-social helping behaviors, we've learned that some people in some situations are more likely than others to provide help. That kind of makes me want to ask, are certain people more likely than others to receive our help? And if so, who are these special people? Before we answer that question, let me remind you of something. People aren't always fair. In fact, sometimes people aren't fair at all. And sometimes they're incredibly shallow. So all that being said, researchers have found that attractive people are more likely to be helped. There are many ways that attractive people benefit from their beauty, and this is really just one example. But the good news is that this bias for helping attractive people isn't purely physical, because interpersonal attractiveness really does matter as well. What I mean is that beautiful people are more likely to be helped, but people who are really nice and fun and sociable and happy, they're also more likely to receive help from others. Why are we more likely to help attractive people? One relatively obvious explanation is that we have ulterior motives. Remember, almost all, if not all, helping behavior is at least partially selfish. So when we help attractive people, we increase the chances that they will become part of our lives, at least in some way. The people we help may be more likely to become our friends, our boyfriends, our girlfriends, maybe even our husbands and our wives. It's also possible that we simply enjoy basking in the beautiful glow of attractive people. In fact, researchers have found that we judge attractive people to be intelligent, successful, happy, well-adjusted, sociable. And if we think beautiful people are so wonderful, we might also think they're more deserving of our help. Deserving. That's somewhat related to a second key factor in determining who is more likely to receive our help. In general, we're more likely to help a person if we think the person should not be held responsible for their messy situation. This trend in helping is probably related to our belief in a just world, which is essentially our belief that people often get what they deserve. So think about this example. If you blow off class because you want to sleep in, that's something you need to take responsibility for, and you probably deserve then the trouble that it creates. So your classmates will be thinking, good luck figuring out what you missed in class that day. But if your mom is in the hospital and you miss class, that's not something you can control. So the other people in the class are less likely to see you as responsible, and they're more likely to help you, you know, perhaps by sharing their notes or explaining what you missed in class that day. If we move away from individual characteristics, such as beauty, and view helping on a larger scale, we'll quickly see that we're more likely to help our own people, in other words, our in-group. In a world as divided as our own, I know that sounds horrible, but it's probably not so bad. And to be fair, this bias toward helping in-group members is typically based on a reasonable explanation. Remember, we've learned previously that when our in-group survives and thrives, we do as well. So if we're going to go out of our way to help someone, we might be more likely to help someone who can directly or indirectly help us in return. That means we're most likely to help people who we know and people who we care about. That said, we're also likely to help people who aren't incredibly close to us, but they're people who share our attitudes and our interests. So for example, if you're a student at Ohio University, you might be more likely to help another Ohio University student. You might not know the student, but if the student is wearing an Ohio University t-shirt, it makes them easily identifiable as one of your own. Sometimes we immediately bond with people, and we're incredibly willing to help those people when we feel that our identities largely overlap. In those situations, we might experience identity fusion, which is an unusually strong connection with a group and the members of that group. One of the best examples I can think of involves veterans. For example, many veterans wear hats to make it clear that they served our country and that they're proud of it. Many of these men and women are bonded by their shared experiences, and that allows them to feel a strong kinship with other veterans, most of whom they've never met. Well, they might not know each other, but you better believe they have each other's backs. In other words, they're likely to help others in their group, and they're likely to receive help from others in their group. And that's probably the way it should be. Regardless of what we think personally, the culture where we live often dictates who's likely to receive help. And that's because over the years, social norms have developed, and those norms have a strong influence on our behavior. In fact, sometimes they can obligate us to help certain people over others. Social and cultural norms vary by culture, 
but there are at least some general rules in place across most cultures that offer some consistency. For example, most cultures have various classes of protected people. In most cultures, children and elderly people are worthy of help simply due to their age, whether it's very young or very old. And although that's true, let's be fair and let's tell a more complete story. Although we tend to help children and elderly people in emergencies, there are many starving children and poor elderly people in the world who would benefit from some additional assistance. And that brings us to an interesting discussion of common norms that are related to helping. In general, we humans are helpful, cooperative people, but certainly not all the time, and definitely not for the same reasons. So let's discuss a few. The norm of reciprocity essentially states that we should help other people, but implied within that norm is the idea that we're more likely to help people who have helped us, and that we expect people to help us if we have helped them. That's definitely not helping for the sake of helping. That's definitely not what we would call pure altruism. That's helping to get some help in return. It's a norm based on the old saying, I'll scratch your back if you scratch mine. The norm of equity is interesting because it calls upon the lucky people in society, those who have probably received more than their fair share, to help those who have not gotten their fair share. From that norm's perspective, a lottery winner would feel pressure to help others, particularly others who have worked hard but just haven't been able to get ahead. The norm of social responsibility advocates that we help people as well, but primarily based on their need for help. And of course, many people in our society embrace this norm and are eager to share resources with other people in need, but not everyone accepts the same cultural ideals. In other words, not everyone agrees to play by the same normative rules. So for example, some people believe in helping others, but in their quest for what is fair and what is just, they believe people should help only those who deserve assistance, not necessarily everyone in need of assistance. This might be one reason why some people embrace the idea of having work requirements for those who receive federal or state welfare assistance. They might believe you're worthy of assistance only if you work for it. So it's fascinating because although there are many shared norms within a society, there are also norms that are at odds with each other. And that's when the debate begins and the arguments take place. Although we all probably agree that others would benefit from our help, it's not always clear who society feels is worthy of that assistance. Well, that's it for this section, but stay tuned because there's more social psychology coming up soon.